Hi guys. Hi guys and welcome, welcome to First Plates. Plates. My name's Lucy. I'm Fabian and today we are going to be showing people who can't cook a few simple recipes. So we believe everyone can cook and what we'd like to do is to show you how to not feel overwhelmed by long ingredients lists by keeping it simple with a few uh, tried and tested recipes. Super, super simple, that's the aim of the game and we want you to make stuff that not only tastes delicious but looks delicious too. Yeah, so try and keep things seasonal but with uh, definitely affordable and available. We don't want you searching around the supermarkets looking for the water of life, you know, we'll just use the water from the tap. Yeah. Um, because it's all about getting you involved. Yeah. And if there are recipes that we've created or that we've come across that we know that there are substitutes, we'll tell you about those. And obviously if we're talking about like vegans, vegetarians, gluten free, we'll mention the alternatives there as well. Um, so let's get on to today's show. Um, so obviously it's the end of January, sure. we need to detox a little bit. We've got a little bit, of, well, I think we're what, using, I guess, the seasonal food of January, so yeah. So we're trying to um, we're trying to go and stick with the, the seasonality. So we've got a parsnip soup. Then we're going to be going on to some mackerel stuff with almonds and oranges, and we've got a little Brussels sprout slaw to go with that as well. And then I think dessert queen, you're going to be making. Well, yeah, apples basically are in season. You might be thinking that apples are always in season, but actually, it's time for the English apples to come out. Yeah, drop off the trees. And we did want to make a, we did want to make a rhubarb crumble, but. We went to four different supermarkets, mm. couldn't find any rhubarb despite it being in season, so we're sticking with our traditional apples today. Yeah, so again, you know, if you can't find the stuff, we will use substitutes, yeah. or alternatives. Exactly. Um, and we will finish that lovely little dessert with a little exciting dessert cocktail. Oh yes, that's the thing I'm most excited about. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm. you know me, I love a drinking. <laughs> I say no more! <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess we're starting with the parsnip soup, right? Yeah, so what we're going to do first, um, I actually haven't um, prepared any of this, so we'll I'm going to be the little sea chef. Great. So what we're going to start by doing is we're going to peel the uh, parsnips because they're going to be roasted. Um, roasting kind of brings out the sweetness and gives them a nice, um, a better taste than just boiling. Okay, so I've done a little um, kitchen jiggery pokey here. I actually, um, I found a, be a better pan. Jiggery so pokey. <laughs> Okay, mother. So I, I've taken my uh, sauteing onions out of the frying pan and put them into the fire. And, really? Um, but actually, um, the reason that I've done this uh, is because when I'm blending my the same place, um, so it's just better to have it in the in the pot that you could start cooking it with. Um, yeah, you want all the juices. Yeah, and all the nice little crispy bits that come out from the frying. Um, yeah, you just want it all to be together because with um, with soup sometimes you just it needs to have a really nice big depth of flavour. So keeping all your cooking stuff together is perfection. Isn't that a song in the eighties? Into fire. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. Shout out the DJ in the room. I love a little bit of a musical reference, especially when it comes to cooking. Yes. Okay. So uh, parsnips are all cut. That took a hundred years apparently. Um, <laughs> And I am going to be covered for a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. So um, while that's going on, I've just um, diced up my garlic. Um, I've put it into the pan. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit because the onions are starting to cook. Okay, is that done enough for you, Chef? Yes, Chef. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I'm going to um, turn this pan off here. Just move that away. Yeah, if you could just chuck that into the oven. And I would say the middle of the oven is fine. Yeah, middle of the oven is fine. In that goes. And how long is that for? We say about 35, 40 minutes. We can keep checking it. I just want you just want to make sure that there's a little bit of browning on everything. Okay. The reason for frying the spices first is because for some reason you can get indigestion if the spices aren't cooked. Just even if it's just for a couple of minutes beforehand. You have to, that's why you do it. Because, I thought yeah. it was because it releases the oils and it gives them, it, you start to smell the flavour a lot stronger. That too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know about the indigestion. Yeah, that's yeah. Interesting. Because yeah. I know, I knew that with, um, you know you can like activate nuts. Apparently yeah. if you have unactivated nuts, it's more likely to cause trouble. Oh, yes. Yeah, and, and the, yeah, because it's basically the nuts are angry because they've been picked. So that's no, why you need really? to, well that's why they become deactivated or whatever, and then you activate them and they relax in the water. Is that real? That's what I've got in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but, but come on, think about it. They become active when you put them in water, right? So they've relaxed. 
I mean, yeah. open up. I mean, I like being in water, so yeah, it's probably true. Probably on a beach. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it sounds about right. Because apparently everything has feelings, right? Sure, because if you're a fruitarian, I only know this from Notting Hill, but apparently if you're a fruitarian, whenever anything gets picked, it's like mad at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to wait for this to heat up, and we've got um, cumin seeds, cayenne pepper, and um, uh, what are these again? Coriander seeds. So these give a really lovely warm um, flavour to it. You can use ground, um, but personally I just love, oh my god. Sorry, I just love the flavour of it. Oh yeah, it's cumin is my favourite thing ever. We're not going to put too much of this on because it will blow your head off. What is that? Um, that's cayenne pepper. Um, so they're really easy to find. What we're going to do, I'm, I'm just going to chuck a couple of these. I would say that she's put two teaspoons of cumin seeds in and two of, what seeds are those? Coriander. Coriander seeds. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Um, and then what you want to do, you want to keep them sort of on and off the heat. Um, if they, when they start to burn, they'll go very, very bitter and you do not want that. So you just really want to have it on the heat until you can smell that it's started to get much more ar aromatic um, and then you would take it off and chuck it in. So that is probably minutes. about three, three to four minutes. You'll actually see the cumin seeds like jumping in the pan. Yeah, um, and the coriander seeds will start to go a slightly darker shade of whatever colour it is they are now, like kind of orangey colour. Yeah, so when you like, when you're cooking it, just mm -hmm. give it a shape mm -hmm. so that they don't burn in any type of way. We have managed to make a makeshift pestle and water. Um, this was Fabienne's idea, so if it doesn't work then it's her fault at the end. It's fine, I'll take it, take it for the team. Um, but as we said, it is going to be all blended. This is really just to kind of crush it up a little bit more because as you can see here, the coriander seeds are splitting in two and you can you can see the little centre of it and that's really where the flavour comes from. So, so you've literally put them in the pan for two minutes just to wake them up a bit? Yeah, right? literally just to um, wake up the flavour because it's the, I think it's the oils within, within the seed that um, you'll start to get that real nice smell and the warmth. Yeah, I can taste smell and flavour. Mm -mm, if only we had smell vision. It's 2020 and it's still not a thing. So I'm just going to put this into the onions now. As, as we said, they're kind of sitting there just waiting for their parsnipy friends when they're done. And are they the simmering? Oven. Or are they just off? No, 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 they're just sitting because you don't. I don't really want any more heat on them because they have gone kind of translucent. So we just that's, that's where I want them to stay. Okay. So I am going to measure this out because if I put too much in it, then nobody's going to be able to eat it. So I'm just going to grab a teaspoon. And you really do want to just keep keep an eye on how much of this goes in because it's quite strong. So this is just cayenne pepper. I mean, I like it it's quite spicy. Do you think that looks okay? Yeah. That'd be all right. We can, and also, with everything that you cook, honestly, you've got to taste as you go. So as you can see, um, the parsnips are now out of the oven. We've boiled a full kettle of, um, of water on the side so that we can just put it into the pan and have like a little stock. So I'm going to turn the heat back on here. Um, just get that up nice and high so that we can kind of refresh the heat on the, the onions. Mm -hmm. Um, while we're waiting for that to heat up again, I'm going to put all my parsnips straight into this pan. So you can see they've got a nice colour on them, there's a little bit, there's a few crispy bits, but... No burn, go team! No burn, good timing on, on, the, uh, on the oven. So yeah, just get this, get this up to temperature. Uh, when you're happy that you can hear that, that lovely um, sizzle again, sizzle, I mean, sizzle. you're going to get your stock used. Now I'm going to use the low salt ones just because I don't really, I don't really want to have like a super salty. I want to know how much salt I'm putting into everything. Okay. So if you can get hold of the no salt ones, and if you can open the box, like that's always super helpful. Sushi, sushi, sushi. Maybe that's your. Yes, job. give me something to do. So yeah, you're just going to add in um, a veg vegetable stock. I'm using a vegetable stock because I I like the flavour, but if you want like a nice kind of meaty flavour, you can use chicken. Um, I wouldn't use something like a beef because it would just detract from the sweetness of the parsnips. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, that would be really weird. Yeah, it's nice to use. Um, it's nice to use the kind of nice vegetable stocks. Excellent, thank you very much. Absolutely. So I'm going to chuck this in now, this uh, stock cube, and then I would say that's probably what a pint. A yeah, I'd half? say a pint. Yeah. yeah, a pint and a half or so. Um, so yeah, don't worry if it looks watery. It's meant to. Yeah, it watery will. the better because once we get that blender in there, it's gonna super yeah, super thick. 
So your bowls are ready. You're having a little mix, getting the heat up in the pan. Yep, just to get but get it up to temperature because once we've blended it, it's just going to go straight into the bowls and we're going to eat it. So, so we're just going to um, spoon this into here. We've got our spoons at the ready, and as we said, you can have this just with a nice bit of crusty bread or... Especially as it's a starty, you know, unless you're just having this on its own. Yeah, um, and it is, a nice little, um, it is a nice little dinner to have. Yeah, right. if you're a diet. If you're a diet. <laughs> yeah. um, also, we definitely, just as we were blending up, tasted, had a little taste of it, need a little bit of salt, so yeah. always just remember to just taste test as you go before you, especially if you serve it up, not only to yourself, but to your mates. Yeah, and that's the perfect time to do it because it's literally just before plating, so you've got that time just to adjust whatever you need to adjust. Um, the cumin smells It's so amazing, yeah, you can really nice. smell um, the flavours. Yeah, um, I'm going to put a little bit of a flourish into it at the end. Um, we talked about putting a little dash of creme fraiche, we don't actually have any creme fraiche, but you can do that. You can use cream. Um, you can use cream. Yeah. That would be very fancy. Hello. Do you want to get naughty? Mm. Okay. Um, and if you wanted to be extra special, just put a little swirl of um, olive oil in there as well. Because the olive oil is so nice and green, and then you can see it in the Oh my God, I die. It looks delicious. And then if... Right. So we're just going to give it a swish. Doesn't matter, it's Lovely. farty. Look how you know. pretty that looks. Like a Jackson Pollock. Yeah, it's life imitating art. Or art imitating life. <laughs> Food imitating <laughs> art. Imitating <laughs> life. What it is. Um, a little bit of maybe pepper. Yes, just, just a little bit of pepper. Pepper's here, got the pepper. Amazing. Um, and that's it. And then we're done. And then you can go in. Go ham. Go give it a taste. A delicious parsnip, spicy parsnip soup. Spicy parsnip soup. Mm -hmm. She's going in. And right in the middle of the cream. Oh, the cream is such a good idea. Yeah. Well. Um, we're going to get started with the next course, like the main course or the next dish. Um, so for that, we're going to use um, seasonal ingredients again. So we've got some mackerel fillets. So um, it, you can use the whole fish for this. And if you do, um, basically just go in and ask your friendly neighborhood fishmonger to fillet it for you. Yeah, or you can get it done simply with, in the supermarket. They'll do it for you on, yeah. on the fish counter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, bones freak me out. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I often don't cook with like fishes like this. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to enjoy eating it. Yeah. But um, yeah, just make sure you get a deep bone and you'll be all right. Yeah. So this one um, has been deboned. It's a nice um, fillet that we uh, we got from the supermarket. So what I've done here is I'm going to make like a little present out of the fish. So I've got some mackerel fillets that I've laid down here. And one thing that is quite important that I have forgotten to do is to oil the foil. <laughs> oil, oil the foil. foil. Yeah. And um, because otherwise your fish will stick to it, and then you'll have an absolute mare getting it out again. So. As you can see, um, I've got the fillets laid down here. I've got my orange slices put on top. We did want to use blood oranges because they're in season, but we couldn't get hold of them. Normal oranges are totally fine to use. Oh. So I've toasted my nuts. Um, so these are gonna go into the a present as well. So I'm just gonna um, put this over the top. I just, the skin of the mackerel fillet is, I, I think it's really, really pretty. So I think it's nice to keep it intact, especially if you're kind of serving it in this, um, in this way. So, um, I am getting on with the Brussels sprout coleslaw um, because, again, Brussels sprouts in season, as we've said. Um, and what you have to do with the Brussels sprouts is just cut the little ends on, off and peel back as much of the kind of outer dirty leaves as possible. Um, well, also because I've just found a whole little bug farm in oh. one of them. Yeah, Yum. so, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Extra protein. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so just make sure you just get all the dirty bit of leaves off. You don't find any more bugs. And um, that's it, yeah. So in the fish goes into the oven. Yeah, so it's gonna go into the oven now um, at 100 and, oh God, 180 degrees for roughly uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. It's a very thin fillet and you don't want it to overcook. It will still stay quite moist because it's an olive present, um, but obviously the moisture and not, the better. Yeah, and obviously the oil as well will help with that, right? Yeah. Um, so then while that's happening, as Fab said, we are doing a nice um, Brussels slaw. So we've got, we're kind of continuing a nice theme of having fruit in our veggies again. So what we're gonna have in this is we're going to slice the um, coleslaw up, uh, sorry, slice the Brussels up really, really finely. 
because they're going to be raw you want them um, to have quite a, a thin texture and then yeah. uh, also what they're like little baby cabbages so they yeah. cut and look exactly the same really yeah pretty much just mini versions yeah just mini versions so i've um started to slice them up really really thinly and then we've got a nice sharp granny smith apple again in season we've also got a nice red onion um and then we're going to have some walnut pieces as well so uh so what shall i do next if you can if you can slice if you can core the apple and mm. slice it into like nice thin matchsticks right. while i continue with the, the brussels sprouts okay. so that will then go into the bowl and we're going to make a nice tahini dressing with crushed garlic a bit of lemon juice and some olive oil just to thin it out a little bit I actually don't love tahini, so I'm I'm kind of going out on a limb here to make it into a dressing. <laughs> okay. um, but well, it is good. That'd be fine. Yeah, it is good as a um, a mayonnaise replacement if you are if you're vegan. Yes, true. Just because it emulsifies a lot of emulsifies. Is that a word? I just made it up. Emulsifies. Yes. Fine. That's a word. Yeah, I mean, also because it's natural. Ultimately, you know, all these like vegan mayonnaise and that. Like, yeah, I'm so skeptical about. That. Yeah, it's really odd. It's like you know. I've got Vegan friends are like, even like vegan cheese, they feel like, well, it's just got so much stuff in that's not natural. Yeah. I've cut them into quarters and I've sliced them even more and then into like little slices. And then I'm going to cut that in half as well. I've just got to try and make it as thin as possible, right? Yeah, because you want the freshness and the brightness of the apple, but ultimately you don't want it to taste like a dessert. So it's kind of going to perk up the earthiness of the Brussels. So, I mean, ultimately I could just, um, could have grated these in, couldn't I? Yeah, you could have grated them in. But, you know, I like to put you to work, so yeah. yeah. Someone's got to, right? Eh? You're uh, you're chopping them into it, so me. Um, so we're gonna put this into the garlic crusher this How time. Many? So just one, because okay. obviously um, raw garlic is quite a strong flavour. We're gonna leave it raw because it really peps up a dressing. We're going to mix that with a couple of tablespoons of the tahini and then enough lemon juice and olive oil to make it quite thin mm -hmm. because we need it to be able to coat everything in the bowl. Mm -hmm. While that's happening, I'm going to add in the last ingredient for this, um, this slaw, which is a red onion. So red onions um, generally are nicer to put into salads because they have a slightly sweeter flavour. Um, yeah. You don't really want to be using like a white or brown onion in um, in something that's raw because it's just too sharp of a mm. flavour. So the last time I showed you how to chop an onion, we just did it kind of quite haphazardly and just to have into chunks to put into the soup. This time, because it's going to remain, we want it to be a bit more pretty. So it's going to be quite thin slices of the um, the, the onion. The best way to do this is obviously being careful of fingers, but if you keep your finger as close to the edge of the onion as possible and just use it as a guide to push the knife down, and then you've got these really, really thin slices here. So Yeah, don't do that slivers. and talk to people. Concentrate. Yeah. Yeah, if you're doing oh, it for the first couple quiet. of times. <laughs> if you're doing it for the first couple of times, just you know, keep an eye on what you're doing. Um, what should I do with the dressing? So, if you could get a couple of teaspoons of the, or tablespoons actually, of the tahini. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is a dessert spoon, and two dessert spoons equal a tablespoon. That, so, we're going to do this. Yeah. How many do you say, couple? I'd say, yeah, I think that's probably enough. That's enough. Okay, it's a little bit more. Just fill up. No. Right, okay. Oh, it smells amazing. Does it? Yeah. Maybe oh, I thought it does. Mm. Interesting. I nice. like, yeah. And it's quite. Hungry. So some tahinis um, that you can get are much thicker than that. So I don't know yeah. if we're going to need that much olive oil. We're definitely going to need the lemon juice because it's okay. it's a nice, it's just a nicer flavour. Mm -hmm. That's right. So here's my lemon. Yep. Right. And uh, I just want, we just want the juice, right? Yeah. Fine. Um, and I don't know if you do this when you're cooking, but I've noticed that some people when they're when they're squeezing the lemon, if they don't know the zester, if you chuck a fork into the centre of it. Because you, you, you've then got something to squeeze the, lem the lemon against. Girl, you clever. Hey, always okay. learning. Right. So yeah, just squeeze a little bit of mint that into there. Mix it around with um, your fork and just give it a taste. And when you're happy with it, we'll tip it into the Yeah, store. I mean, what are we looking for? Something that's a little bit sweet, but it's got a bite, I suppose. Yes. It needs to be okay. wet enough to coat, but thick enough to stick. Hey. 
And then I'm making an absolute mess of this because the bowl's quite small. But with your hands, your clean hands, just mix this around so you've got kind of a nice um, melange of the red onion. So you can see it, but it's not kind of overpowering because again, it is raw. So you don't want it to kind of blow your head, your head off. Also, um, with when you put uh, lemon juice into, into liquids, it makes it thicker and as you can see, Oh, That's okay. So stir, it's kind of come together. You know, you do that a lot in um, cheesecakes and things like oh, that. Yeah, and tarts. yeah, because that's with the kind of. Um, so maybe with that, then we will need a little splash of olive oil. I just uh, chopped uh, a dash in there. Okay. It's um, more like. What, oh, does that do you think a little bit? Yeah, more? a bit yeah. more. Let's put a tablespoon of the olive oil in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, fine. Okay, and so then once you've tasted that and you're happy with it, just add it into the bowl, mix everything around. You can do it with your hands or probably a spoon's better because it is quite a thick mixture. Um, add that through. And then as you can see visually, it's not that different from the mayonnaise, but it's just a little bit healthier. Healthier, you know what you've put into it. Friendly. Ultimately, these recipes are for you to just know that whatever you're cooking, you know what's going into your mouth, you know? Yeah, bring the fish over to here. And then we can open up the parcel just to check that it's done. Yeah, so how will you know when it's done? So the fish will be, you'll be able to flake the fish apart and you'll be able to peel the skin off. So, I think, yeah, for me that looks done. Let me just see if I can flake the skin off. I'm happy with that. So we'll leave that to sit a little bit for um, just while we kind of get the, everything together to plate up. Oh my, oh my god, that tahini dressing is the one. Well done, mate. But I love it so much, I'm just going to make it some more. <laughs> I would say probably is good for one very hungry person. Yeah. If you wanted to um, to do it for two people, mm -hmm. you would just need uh, two more two more fillets. We need a fish slice or something to move the. Do fish you know what, Lucy? I think the only person that's got a fish slice is you. So. Oh, all right, fine. Um, okay, so just in the absence of a, in the absence of a fish slice, because apparently I'm a pretentious person that owns one, um, we've got this big fork. So we're just going to slyly, and as I, really, I, I promise. as I mentioned earlier, I neglected to um, oil the other side of my fish, so it has stuck to the foil a little bit, but it's still sliding off quite nicely. Lovely. Well done. So I'm going to have to do some kind of magic here to get it onto the plate without breaking the fish up. So I'm going to again use my fingers just to stabilise it. I'm going to lift it. Ow. Come on, one, two, three. Play the game, fish. Right, and it's on the plate. Perfect. Good boy. Okay, so we've got our fish, we've got our slaw, we've got a little extra dressing. I mean, this for a January meal is so healthy. Yeah, it's fresh. You know, I'm a condiment queen, and mm. even the condiments are healthy here. Exactly. So we've got the fish, we've got that lovely omega three, which I understand is very good for you. Good for the brain, isn't it? Good for the brain. Yeah, good for. Get Your those immune uh, system. Yeah. Yeah. The juices going after the old Christmas. Yes, definitely. And something like this, Gosh. where you've got the raw veg, you've got a little bit of fruit in there, you've got some lovely garlic, which again, great for fighting off a cold. Yes. This is your this is your main course to be eaten um, just after your, your soup. So, also, I would say that even though sorry to cut you off there. No um, also, it's even though there isn't like a main, you know, carb. Mm. It's still filling. Well, yeah, because you've got some, you've got the nuts in there, um, you've got uh, a good amount of fish. You can add if you wanted to, maybe a bit of couscous or some quinoa or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you want yeah. To have a carb. Yeah. Um, but again, I think you'll start to eat this because there's quite a lot of fiber in there. You'll start to get quite full. Good. So, do you want to have a little uh, plate up, my dear? Yes. <laughs> And, you know, ultimately, when you um, are eating something, it's it's you're using all the five senses. You want to still want to smell nice, it's to look good. Mm. You need to, I don't know, hear it, 
Talk it's, to you. Oh, yeah, because it's lovely when you're cooking when you start to hear, you know, things popping. And a lot of the yeah. time you know that that's how... Not burning. <laughs> well, not burning. You don't want to hear them burning. And so there you have it. Um, this is mackerel stuffed with toasted almonds and mm. orange with a uh, Brussels sprout slaw with a tahini dressing. Yum, yum. If I knew we had cameramans give it to, but we don't, so I'm gonna eat it all. I mean, I'm gonna eat it all. I'm absolutely I'm gonna get stuck starving. in here. This looks delicious. I'm gonna go straight in for the fish, and um, bye-bye for January. Exactly. Whoops. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it's got to be done. I knew it would happen. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna use a serving spoon, don't mind me. Just, um, just I, I think we should talk about how perfectly cooked the fish is. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really, mm, mm, really, mm. really good. Um, so good. So mm. good. Mm -hmm. Yum. The point is, I guess, a lot of people feel a bit uh, afraid of cooking mm. an extravagant meal, mm. or just a meal, when yeah. they live by themselves or they're just cooking for one. But just remember, you can have for lunch, you can have for dinner the next day. If you yeah. need a quick something to shove in your mouth before you run out of the house or whatever. Um, and absolutely, and, and having well done home cooked meals is like such a pillar of self-care so yeah. even if you think it's a little bit extravagant it's looking after yourself and these ingredients are not expensive at all absolutely right well excellent uh, there's our first course yeah. now we've got to step up and do the uh pudding dessert. queen fabian i'm so excited for this because i have to do a lot less i'm not a pudding person <laughs> i know and i don't have my apron on so uh, well do you want to switch i think i'd love a bit of the wizard oh course. who doesn't Chef Fabs has stepped up her game. So exciting! Been promoted to head chef. So you can see the uh, apron's been switched over. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we are going to make a good old classic. It is the apple crumble. We were going to make apple and rhubarb crumble because uh, rhubarb's also in season, but unfortunately couldn't get in the shops. So we went into four different shops. Now. Yeah. Let's get started. So super simple ingredients. We've got apples, obviously. So we have cooking apples, Granny Smiths, which are like massive, almost as big as our. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got, uh, so super simple, just brown sugar, brown rather than white because it's um, sweet, it's a bit dark, it's a bit sweeter. Yeah, it goes and it's, it gives a nice kind of crunchy caramelised Exactly, taste. to the topping. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so, and then we've just got flour and uh, butter. So, let's crack on with the show. Let's go. So, uh, tell me what you need me to do, Chef. Can you please peel and uh, decor the apples? So, the oven is on at... Um, 180, 90, the usual type that you probably bake a cake with. Um, and the key is with the apples, just get as many um, to the size of your cooking tray, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, our cooking tray is quite large today. Um, so we've got about five apples. What would you say this is about? An, uh, 10 inches? Yeah, I'd say yeah. 10 inches. Oh, girls are always so accurate. Um, yeah. So, uh, we yeah. Got, so many people saying, guys, that's nowhere near 10 inches. I don't know what you're talking about. It's probably going to be men. Mm. Um, anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so while Lucy is doing the peeling coring of the apples, I'm going to start on the topping. So I, you need 175 grams of plain flour, um, which we have here. Um, if you don't have scales, one, 15 grams is the equivalent to one tablespoon. So if you've got a tablespoon, just work that out, so that works out about 11 tablespoons. Yep. So once you've buttered the dish, um, in back to the topping, you need 110 grams of butter, preferably unsalted, um, and often on butter packs, they have little um, indicators of how many grams each is. Well, this one doesn't, so um, I'm just going to go, um, because it's, I know that this is 250 grams and I need 110, I'm just going to go to grab a knife, cut it in half, so it's going to make 125, so I know that that's 125, so I'm just going to go a tad less and do this. That should be 110. Oh. Great, so this is about 110 grams. So because we've got to rub it in the good old fashioned way, I need to just cube this really, really half cold butter, um, which my delightful shoe chef is going to do. Because that's yes, another because cake, cake for the kitchen or Fabian. Um, if you've got the, the slightly longer nails, you'll get a load of butter and flour underneath your fingertips and that's a big win. Yeah, and I mean, the better alternative is to just use a uh, food processor. A little bit of salt, just for some oh, reason yes, you need that to 
taste. Um, so sous chef taking over yes, from the let's butter. Swap. Now, um, while Lucy is doing the um, crumble, so also with the crumble, you just want to do it like this. You don't want to get too stuck in. You just you're constantly doing this with your fingers, mm -hmm. so you don't get it in your nails as much. Yeah, and you don't want the butter to melt either because you want it to be like bitty and yeah, breadcrumby. Um, so I'm gonna pop these little cubes of um, apples into the bowl. Bowl tray. Do you want to put it in a bowl or a tray? Baking a dish. dish. A, a dish. dish. A dish. Perfect. So this is a really nice dish to have with like a uh, like a custard or ice cream as well. Oh, isn't it? oh custard. Yeah, custard's the one. As you can see here with the apples, like it doesn't have to be you know finely cut. It's just like as long as they're not too massive. Yeah. But obviously it's going under a veil of uh, crumble and um. So you know you don't have to be too fussy. Lovely crumbly coaty jacket. Look at you being so fabulous with your crumble. So as we were saying, just up to the top, just to make sure that all the butter is rubbed in. Because um, you you don't really you, you want the butter really kind of incorporated into the flour because obviously when it gets hot, it, all it's going to do is melt, and you want it to make a crust. Yes, right? exactly. And an even crust. That's why we're yeah. rubbing it in nicely and nicely. Um, so as you can see, our apples are a little bit brown already, so we're going to put some lemon juice over the top just to stop it from oxidising a bit more and going brown because, I mean, it doesn't look sexy. No. And it's also nice because it gives it that little lift because it's obviously quite a sweet dish. Yes, so that little bit of sharpness is yeah. nice. It just gives it, gives it a round of mouth feel. A round of mouth feel. I, I hear people say that. I, I feel like it's a thing. Maybe it's not. <laughs> we might be using it again. I think we will. <laughs> I think we won't, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put some lemon juice on. Um, so we're going to add, just once I've done the lemon, add it to the apples, we're going to add a bit of cinnamon, just a little teaspoonful, um, because the cinnamon, once the apples are stewing nicely, just adds an extra layer of flavour really, doesn't it? I feel like you could maybe put a little bit of ginger in it as well. Like, yes. If we're using the cinnamon, I think not today, but you could put some ginger in, that might make it... We nearly love our spices. Yeah, and also people love our people love um, ginger, don't they? Yeah, I quite makes people feel um, healthy. Doesn't yeah, it? exactly. I'm I'm a big fan of ginger in um, ginger in desserts. I think you could use fresh, but like a stem ginger would be nice as well. Oh mm. yes, stem ginger would be awesome. Some people sweetie. Yeah, really nice. So I think uh, are you happy with this now, Jeff? I am. Okay. Oh, so. You can customise, um, as well obviously as the fruit, you can customise your topping. So we're doing very traditional flour, butter, sugar topping, um, whereas actually you can add some oats in there. Mm -hmm. I think we might add some oats. Um, and we know we've all got those like little packets of um, um, oats in the house, you know, for like when you're doing your early morning breakfast on the way to work. Yeah. Nice. Add them in. You might just have normal oats. It's whatever you, whatever you fancy, really. And you could put nuts in as well, just to give it a little oh, bit yeah. of crunch. Oh, a little bit of pecans. I think we might put them on the top afterwards. So, 110 grams. It's the same amount of butter as there is sugar. It is a very sweet dessert. It I is. I mean, the more sugar, the better for the crumble topping because it makes it um, form that delicious crumble like crust topping. Yeah, I love. My favourite part of a crumble is the bit where the crumble just meets the apple and it gives you that kind of really nice chewy yeah. texture. Even though earlier I said I wasn't a dessert person, the more I'm looking at it, I'm kind of like, you know what, I could eat that. Yeah, I mean, I literally, I uh, yeah, I've got a very sweet tooth, so I'm, I'm like, I want all the topping. Yeah. The point is, the, um, it's in the oven for so long anyway. Yeah, and it's got enough time. You, you know? want the apples to kind of make their own sauce, so they're going to really reduce down, get really, really soft. And as they release their juices, the crumble will start to um, absorb it. Um, and then you'll have that crunchy, crunchy topping with that nice layer of chew that is my favourite. And then you've got these sweet apples underneath. Yeah, I am also just grazing the lawn like it's oh, it's so chefy. Um, so I'm just going to add, just, just break up a tiny bit. Um, as you can see, we don't have many. So I want to try and get a little bit of it over the top. Nice little pecan rubble we're making there. Oh, I like that. Pecan rubble. Mm. Ryan. Um, so uh, I'm just going to add, because I'm naughty, a more bit sugar. more of the brown sugar on top, just to make sure that we do get that um, caramelization. Just to make sure you get quite enough sugar into your diet. It's very yeah. important. It's a, a key pillar of nutrition. A key pillar. <laughs> 
So that is 190 and I'm going to set it for 30 minutes, potentially could be 35. Okay. But just to give it a check, you should always try and give it a check after yep. say 20 minutes. Whenever you've got something in for a long time in the oven, just give it a check halfway through. Taking a little sneak of it out. Yeah, we're taking it little just to, just to have a taste. Also, just a small, small, small taste. Um, also, as you can see, I clearly like topping more than fruit, but some of us might be different. Yeah, I mean, it's called crumble for a reason, like, you want the crumbly bit. You know it! So we were talking so much about what we could have with it, like custard and creme fraiche, and then we thought, hey, we've got some double cream, so we're actually going to whisk it up and put a tiny touch of vanilla in and have it on the side. Yeah, exactly, because you can't have hot, hot, hot. Yeah, you want something to cool your mouth down. <laughs> Look who it is, it's my sous chef! There oh, we go! Okay, right. um, Actually, did you ever do, did you do a food tech um, GCSE? Uh, yes. So when I was doing food tech GCSE, my teacher came up behind me and said, Oh Lucy, you've got excellent wrist action. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a male teacher. No, it was a female. I don't know if she realised how in inappropriate it was. <laughs> but literally, um, super easy to do this. Make sure you're doing it with double cream. Don't do it with low fat because it needs to be fatty. And then whisk it up. And that literally took, what, 30 seconds? Right, so just going to spoon it in. Look how nice that looks. Oh Obviously, we're going for the rustic style. Mm. So. so there, we have it. Homemade apple crumble um, with a little bit of cinnamon and we have vanilla cream. Excellent. I'm so excited to eat this. Let's tuck it. Ah. I'm going to grab another spoon. <clears throat> right, then. Do first in, Chef. Oh, gosh. Get in, see, Chef. Get in. Oh, excited. Check the toppings. Um, sometimes the topping won't look all over. It will look like all over golden. Yeah, that's the colour you're looking for. You're looking for like a golden, golden brown texture, like some. <laughs> I love it. Cheers <laughs> to us. <laughs> So the pièce de résistance, the best part of the day. Um, we are going to make a pomegranate and tangerine cocktail. Okay, so um, all we're really doing is something super simple. Um, we've just got the three ingredients. So it's the pomegranate, the tangerines, and the vodka. Um, so depending on how strong you like your drinks, um, you can add a touch of soda to that. Um, soda over lemonade because lemonade's quite sweet, takes away from the flavours of anything else. Um, so. Um, we are just gonna, well, I'm just gonna chop up the pomegranates. Is there anything you could use if you couldn't get hold of the pomegranate? Raspberries. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna have that same tartness. Yeah. Um, cranberries, but I don't think they, you don't really get them. I think that's much. too tart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and of course you don't need to go fresh, you could just go for the juices. Yeah, the juice, and then um, you've, you've, get, you've saved yourself a job here. Okay, so Basically, we have de the pomegranate, mm -hmm. pop the little jewels in the uh, mixer. Let's just um, cut the tangerines in there as well. Yeah, perfect. So, um, we are just making um, enough for two people. Yeah, because we've done a, a long, hard day of cooking and we deserve a drink. I might just use one more tangerine because I just want it to level up with what's actually in the um, the pomegranate. Yeah, because you want um, you want enough of the juice to kind of go against the, the taste of the vodka. Yeah, exactly. We have to say, Fabs is like cocktail maker extraordinaire. Um, you can yeah. get drunk with it and breathe like it. I'm even realising it. Yeah, I mean, just walk into the flat and breathe in the air. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to make the juice. Um, we want the vodka to complement the juice, we don't want it tasting like petrol. Look at all these colours, it looks so pretty. Yeah, and also just remember that... Um, oh, that's, that's perfect, yeah. yeah. So you don't need a blender, you don't need the juice, you just need a, a spoon. Mush it up! Yeah, mush it up, mush it up. Yeah, so obviously all this is going to go through the drain, as we said, so no stress on all the bits, because some people are a bit freaked out by bits, aren't they? Yeah, and I mean, you don't really want a bit of see you floating in your cocktail. No thanks. <laughs> um, right, I think that is basically it. Perfect. Squish it a little bit more. Fun. And then would you do like the whole cocktail? Hell yeah! Thing? Wow. Right, so we've got our vodka. Um, I'm going to put four shots in. Whoa. Hello, watch out now. Um, two shots per person. That's a bit tense. That's fine. <laughs> it's not like we've got work tomorrow, is it? So. No. So, ice is in there. Lids on, make sure that the lid is tight. Mm -hmm. 
Get it shaking. Get it shaking. Shake that thing. Shake it. Um, this can get boring really quickly, so just count to ten. Okay, fine, that's a good tip. That's a really good cocktail making tip. <laughs> okay. Um, Are you well, to ten? Is that yeah. a good thing? Yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> Three, two, and then you give one! It to, and then you give it to your friend. And what does she do with it? She has a little shake too. Oh, excellent. Okay, fine. <laughs> this and is I'm counting to well three. Mixed. So while she's doing that, I'm doing this. Dun, 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 dun. The moment of truth has arrived. You know when you're just like, give me alcohol. Yes, I know that. So really no one ever. Yeah. I'm not round here anyway. So da, 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 da. just to give it that fancy air, we're going to put a little slice of the tangerine on the side, which you yeah. can and also, have or have not. Oh, look at that colour. Proper Cosmo vibes. Proper Cosmo vibes. Seasonal Cosmo vibes. Seasonal Cosmo vibes. We'll... Right, so that's done. So one, before Lucy puts a little twist on, I am just going to, I'll use this one actually. Uh, you know how sometimes in margaritas they salt the um, rim? Yeah. You should always put a little bit of the juice of whatever the fruit you've got in there around the rim. So people put their lips to it, they're like, oh my God, I can already taste the rim. It's amazing. Yes. Once we've done the we've rimmed the edges, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I mean literally, I thought this was a PG household. It, it totally is. Just lightly, if, I mean, we thought we had a zester, but we don't. Just lightly with potato peeler. Yeah. Just get easy. Um, skim some of the rind of the tangerine and then twist it off and pop it in. Yeah. There's a little surprise element. And yes. there you have it. Nice. Your tangerine pomegranate cocktail. Oh, I was being nice to you. Oh, you were giving it to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, gosh. That's mm. actually lovely. Yeah, that's I really like, nice. I like the um, the tangerine. It's a really um, like subtle flavour, and you cannot taste the vodka at all. Yes. Which is dangerous as hell. Which is also the makings of a great cocktail. And a great night out. Hey. Hey. Um, right, well that's it from us. I hope you enjoyed watching. Yep, so next time we have got Valentine's Day coming up. Get you in the mood for love. So we've got some lovely simple recipes um, just for you to cook for your loved one on Valentine's Day. Yes, or your friend. You can have your friend. Valentine's Day. Absolutely. It's like a bro version. Guy, no, guy Valentine's Day. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I went too far. Um, but yes, so they'll be super simple, so you don't feel scared in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And just remember, from first plates to first dates, got you covered. Yeah. Bye.